Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of 5-Minute Machine Learning. Today we'll be applying principal component analysis in Python. Principal component analysis, or PCA in short, is a dimensionality reduction technique that could be used in data visualization and feature engineering. The core of PCA is to reduce high dimension data to lower dimension, which are more manageable and understandable. It tries to represent as much information as possible by using as few variables as possible. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's first bring in some of the libraries we're going to use. Of course, we're going to use pandas, numpy, and then we're going to plot. So we're going to use matplotlib, and then of course, sklearn. We're going to load the wine dataset. All right, let's bring this. Next, we're going to turn the wine dataset into a panda data frame, just for easier manipulation here. Now let's briefly take a look at the wine dataset. All right, so it has 13 independent variables, as you can see here, alcohol, malic, acid, ash, etc. And then at the end, the last column is the target. We have three kinds of target. And I believe it has 107 something um, dimension. Yep, 178 records and then 14 columns, including our target variable. And then if we look at our target variables count, It has three levels. It's either one, zero, or two. All right, let's keep moving. So one thing you must pay attention to when you're applying PCA is that you have to standardize your input data. Otherwise, your output will be heavily biased towards variables that with high variance. So you, you want to make sure all of your input variables are on the same scale to start with. So with that, we're going to use from sklearn the standard scalar and we're going to drop the target variable which is our dependent variable axis one is column wise and then we're going to make it y and then we're going to apply our standard scalar to all of the independent variables okay so next is the meat of the burger we're going to import the pca module from the scalar and then we're going to specify the components equals to two because we're going to reduce the dimensionality into two. Okay, we're going to fit pre-processed standardized X dataset and then the final result we'll call it principal DF. It's also going to be a panda data frame and then we're just going to name it uh, principal component one and principal component two or PC one or PC two in short. All right, and then last we're gonna concatenate our target variable back. So now let's plot it. So these are just creating a, a canvas for the plot. And then we have three levels of targets, zero, one, and two. So we're gonna use three colors, red, green, and blue, and three different kinds of markers. All right. So this is the principal components analysis plot for the wine dataset. So we originally had 13 variables. Now we reduce 13 into two, namely principal component one and principal component two. Now we don't know the exact meaning of these two variables. They're just merely some linear combination of the original 13 variables. But what we do observe here is that only looking at PC1 and PC2, they have fairly good ability to clustering or divide our original data set. We see three distinguished clusters represents for three different kinds of wines, which is ideal. Also, we could look at the percentage of variance explained by our PC1 and 2. So our PC1 can explain more than 36% of the original data set's variance, while our PC2 could explain 19%. And we can also look at the factor loading. Um, this is basically a recipe 
or ingredients of the linear combination from the original data set to our two PCs. So it's a 13 by 2 matrix mapping the original 13 variables to our PCs. Now we can also examine the data set using k-mean. So k-mean is a algorithm, um, so it iteratively decide what's the best optimal clustering given the number of clusters. So here, for example, if we specify we need three clusters, the k-mean algorithm will optimize the output clusters. And now we can compare the output from the k-mean analysis to that from the PCA analysis. And as we can see here, they look quite the same. And of course, we can look at the centers of the clusters. So in conclusion, PCA could be used for data explainability. For example, if we look at the factor loading, we will be able to tell what kind of original variables contributes the most in explaining the variance. And do they come from the same source? Do they share some common characteristics? Second, PCA could be used for data validation and understanding of the data. For example, you could apply PCA on different data samples, from training, testing to OOT, to see whether there is consistency among those data samples. Next, PCA could be used to explain your model. When you have a finished model, you would have feature importance and then by examining the feature importance and PCA, you will be able to tell whether the most important features explains the most of the data variance. Last but not least, you could get results by applying PCA on categorical variables, but it's not recommended. For categorical variables, we could use other techniques such as multiple correspondence analysis, but that's for next episode. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, have a good day.